Hello everybody, welcome to Vintage Inspirations. I'm Tanya and I hope everybody's doing well. I'm a little bit under the weather. It's been it was freezing cold and now it's rainy. And then um you know it's hard to get uh okay, my window broke on my car. It's actually so hard just to for somebody to order the piece for me. Atlanta has grown, it's so funny. <laughs> it's really funny. The only option I have is to uh turn it into uh, the dealership and they'll keep it for a week or maybe two because they have to do a diagnostics test. The window just doesn't go up. I mean, how much, how many testing do you have to do? But any old way, let me stop ranting. But any old, let me get the good news. I found the company that come out to my driveway and fix it. So they'll be here in a couple of days. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Well, he said he'll be here in a couple of days if some of his appointments cancel. Because he said normally some appointments cancel. If not, he'll be here um, towards the end of the month or the beginning of the month. So that's not too bad. At least I still have my car. I could still use it if I need to. I just kind of I bought some Gorilla Tape and I taped like some plastic really really secure and protected from the rain so i'm okay now but it just kind of wore me down a bit um having done my hair that's why i'm not on camera <laughs> i guess i shouldn't you know what i have like a scarf i should have just put on a scarf i'm not sure but anyway you guys know what i look like and today we're going to do a charm bracelet um it's the middle of the day and i'm trying to get at least make a video today because i wasted two days uh riding around trying to get information on that uh, issue with the car. Yeah, and then the rain slows it down. I mean, it's raining here in Georgia all day, every day. But I, I'll take that then the 10 degree weather. So I wanted to make a charm necklace. I was actually gonna make a necklace, like link it myself, but I found this beautiful sterling silver. It's already linked together. So I don't, why would I make one when I have one? See, sterling silver has the mark right there. I don't know if you can see it. And do I have my light on? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. I'm not using my ring light. So, yeah. So, that's what we're going to do. And then I have a lot of charms here. Let me show you some of the charms. Um, I wasn't sure what to do. I found like some, um, some ballerina. Where'd it go? Okay. Like I have like this cute little dress. I was going to make a little girl's charm brace necklace. But I have more animals than I do like things for little girls so here's a little shoe here's a cheerleader and some are sterling some aren't here's a little soldier playing a drum looks like his is his feet broke oh no his feet aren't broke that's just the shoes and um I have this little cute this is sterling it says mom cute little symbol and then here, see, I have a little poodle. This owl might be too big, but don't you need one for, like, the pendant to hang down? So maybe we'll use that one. Let me put my camera down just a bit. Yeah. Maybe we'll use the owl as the uh, actual pendant that's going to hang down the middle. And then I have a lot of horses, some bunny rabbits. So I think we're going to do, like, an animal um, charm necklace. Here's another bunny rabbit. So, like this one's pewter. I don't know what kind of metal that is. Stainless maybe. That's sterling. And we have another horse. I believe that one is sterling too. What else do we have? We have a beautiful cute little bunny. That one's sterling I believe. And then there's another horse. This seems like it might be a horse theme. Oh, I know what we could do. We could put horses on. And maybe this could be the pendant because that's a bigger head. Okay, let me see how many horses I have. Let me put these down because I wanted to add some of those bunnies. But do bunnies and horses go together? I don't know. Maybe we'll just do that because it seems like I have, I have quite a bit of horses. And then I have some bunnies. So maybe we'll just do that. What about the poodle? Oh, because the poodle was so cute. You see that? <laughs> so cute. I have this one. He's so cute. This is the planters man, the peanut man. He's too cute. I don't know if you can see that. It's so little. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Okay, I think that's what we're gonna do. This one is cute too. It's a little boxing glove. It's so cute. It's so cute. It has a mark right in front. I guess it says Sterling Silver 9 to 5. I'm not sure. But I don't know. Does it have to be a thing? Can't we just put... How does... You know, it doesn't have to be a thing because... And I'm sorry. I had some Asian food. I was kind of scratching my throat. That spicy. I had some spicy oil on it. It was delicious. Because I have some charm bracelets and like they do have kind of a theme like Christian or um, vintage. But I don't know. Here's a cute little question mark. I have a, uh, motorcycles. Is it sterling? I don't see a mark. But it looks sterling. It says motorcycles. I used to have a Holly Davidson. Is it here? Oh no, I don't see it. And by the way, I have... A lot of sterling silver charms. I can't find them. I happen to find these in kind of random places, but I have a bag with at least maybe um I'm gonna say like 30 or 35 charms. I can't find it. I I mean I've been wanting to do this uh this video, this vlog, but I couldn't because I've been looking for the charms. So I found enough, so I figured we could do something. But I'm looking here, I also have a lot of people. There's a lot of people that I have. Let me Get them all lined up and show them to you. Where's the other one? So I'm seeing four plus the planters guy. So that would be five. So we have five people too. So we're going to maybe do people, horses, and bunnies. I think that would be cute. And now I want to know, do we use the horse for the pendant or the owl? I, maybe we'll do the necklace and whatever one looks nicer on it, we'll use that. So let's slide this out of the way. And I'm hoping I have enough rings because my rings are with the charms. Yeah. Well, here's another person. They're playing on um, their chili. There's two chilies with pom poms. Oh, I have an idea. I could take some of these hoops off of these. Let me see. So there's one, two. Okay, so I can use those hoops if I need to. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> two wine glasses. And what is that inside? Is that a cherry inside? It's a little red ball. This is sterling. This is Marcus right there. Okay, let me get my tools. And then let's get started. Okay. So, um, this is pretty easy. You just put the, um, just put the charm on it. So, you got to kind of measure, you know. So, you have one that's going to hang, that one's going to hang there. Yeah. I think we need to put the charm, the pendant on it now so we can secure it. Do I have to? I think so. I think it's going to be that one. Yeah, okay, this one. I don't think I want to do a theme. I think I just want to put random charms because it, I'm leaving some beautiful ones behind over here. <laughs> and I'm looking that they got to make it on to the, um, like this one. This is gorgeous. It's a sterling silver, like a, um, what is that called? Like a, um, I'm not even sure what that's called. Like maybe like a, a beer sty. It's so cute. It opens and everything is like functional. And then the mark is inside. It may be pewter. Oh, it looks like it says 925. Yeah, it looks like it says 925. So cute. It has a be some beautiful design. I want to use that one. I don't know. And then we have this cute little, uh, this is a like a peach or apple. It's so cute. Hmm. I really like this boxing glove. And then look at this baby shoe. That is so cute. So, okay, we're going to just add some uh, random charms. I wish I need to figure out which one I want to use for the pendant. I wish I had help sometimes. <laughs> I'm all by my lonesome. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to put 
this funny right here on top. I want to make sure that I'm right where you could see me doing it. Okay. And all I'm doing is opening this up so I can get it on. And you want to secure it nice and tight so it doesn't fall off when you're wearing it. Okay, so we started with a bunny and it looks cute already. Yeah, we'll hang it on that mannequin when we're done. Okay, then next we'll put, I guess, um, the poodle. Yeah, we'll do the poodle. Maybe the shoe. The shoe is so cute. Yeah. So I wonder, let me see how many charms. One, two, three. I guess every third one. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, maybe every third one. So one, two, one, two, three, yeah. And sometimes you need two to um get it nice and even and tight so it doesn't come off. I think someone asked once, where do I, where you can buy these things from? You can go to your, uh, any craft store should sell these. And I have a whole lot of other kind of tools like this too, but I haven't had to use them, so I haven't pulled them out. These are my basic three that I use for the type of uh, jewelry that I, you know, make, craft rather. A cutter, like a needle holes, and then a clamp. And I have some other ones with like some gauges on it. Like, let me see. Like if you had a piece of wire and you want to like, okay, let me show you for example. Okay, like this. Say if you want to make something like this, you know, like a fastener or something to uh, attach a necklace. It's a machine that you put it in and then you twist the wire and you can make something like that. I've done that type of crafts before. Maybe we'll do something like that eventually. Yeah. And so um, I go to Michael's, that's here in Georgia. I don't know what they have where you live, but you got to find arts and crafts, like a Hobby Lobby, anything similar to Hobby Lobby. So that's what, we, that's what it looks like so far. I like it. And then we got to go three more. One, two, three. Okay, now what are we going to use? Maybe we'll use one of these people. We use the little cheerleader lady. And so let's get her opened up. Is that the third? Nope, I lost count. No, that wasn't the third one. Um, one, two, three. Okay, this is it. And anyone can do this. Anybody can do this. All you need is some round. And if you don't have any round circles, you can make some. You could use this to make it. You just wrap. Let me show you. You get some wire. And there's another tool. I guess I should have pulled it out because maybe we will need to use it today. But you just wrap it around. But there's another one that's made for that. And then you can just make one and you just uh, cut it to shape. It's so simple. Okay, well, you get the picture. It's round. But this isn't round. I'm just trying to show you an example. But I have one that's round. And then you just make it and then you just cut the ends off and squeeze it together. Just to, This is how they make them in the factories, the same way. that's looking so cute so far I love it okay let's go on to the next one 
one, two, three. Well, maybe I should have did every two because I have a lot of charms. <laughs> oh, let's see, let's see. Because I'm almost down to the bottom and we'll be finished. Okay, let's do, but they kind of hang. Won't they be in the way? Mmm. Confusion, confusion, confusion. Mmm. You know, the other day, for some reason, I was watching um, the Django Untitled. Did anybody watch that with Jamie Foxx and uh, Christopher Waltz, uh, Kerry Washington, Samuel L. J Jackson, and that other guy that was on the Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's such a good picture. So I saw it once before, but it popped up in my DM, so I just decided to watch it. It's just... I think I enjoyed it this time more than ever. I love Jamie Foxx. Yeah. And Christopher Waltz. Oh, my God. He was amazing. Oh, he terrorized everybody. That was hilarious. Yeah. And then once I watched that, all like Spaghetti Westerns start popping up. And I'm a fan, a huge fan of Spaghetti Westerns. If you haven't watched Spaghetti Westerns, Please take your time to Google and watch a couple. They are phenomenal. I, I think one of my favorites is um, Magnificent Seven. With um, it's like an action western. You got uh, Yul Brenner, and I may be saying the names wrong because I'm not too good. You got Steve McQueen. Uh, I love Charles Bronson. Oh my God! And Charles Bronson, he also played in the. Uh, Chino and what's the other one? Skins, Redskins. Yeah, yeah. Red, oh, Red Sun, Red Sun. I mean, please watch some. They're just amazing. Um, and that Magnificent Seven, that is amazing. It's like a group of seven gunfighters, gunfighters that they were hired to protect a small village in Mexico from a group of like bad guys. Well, they call them bandits. I'm gonna take these off and I'm gonna do every two while I'm talking. Yeah. What's another good uh, Western? Um, oh, uh, Qu Quentin Tarantino, I think it is. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Well, uh, he's he's an amazing uh, film director and uh, screenwriter and actor. Oh my gosh, yeah, he's amazing. So you know he um. He's the one that um, was the director on the, the Django, but you gotta watch some of his other um, some of his other uh, amazing movies and his acting. He acts too. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. So I was trying to think of another good spaghetti western. I forget names. Oh, I have a my my ex. I was about to say I have a friend, but he's my ex. He knows. He's the one that um, cause I always love western movies, but he had like. Every Western that you could ever have in the uh, CDs and in the VCRs. Oh, my God. He used to let me uh, borrow them. So every time he would come visit, he would take the ones that I watch and bring me more ones. Oh, my God. I was in heaven. This was years, years ago. I don't even have a DVD or CD play or VCR in the house. This house too small. I had to throw everything out or donate or sell. Okay. So every two... One, two. Let's put that lady back on. Um, I also like another actor. His name is um Lee Van uh Clee. Yeah, Lee Van Clee. Oh my goodness. Oh <laughs> you talking about a good western? Oh my god, what did he play in? Let me try to think. Think, think, Tanya. I know you know it. Um oh, he played in the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, with Clint, with Clint Eastwood and um, uh, Eli. There's a bunch of guys. Lee, but I don't remember. What's Lee's last name? I don't remember. Oh, my God. But um, uh, I mean, Lee, <laughs> you know, I get things so mixed up. His name is Lee Van Clee. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My memory. Okay, that one's D and one and two. Okay. Yeah, but that's an amazing Western. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, just amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. 
I also like uh, Sidney Partier. He played some good movies too. Oh, he played Buck and the Preacher with Harry Belafonte and Ruby D. And that, I mean, the list goes on. Oh, that was, if you haven't seen that, you need to watch that. The Buck and the Preacher. Oh my God. I mean, Harry Belafonte, he did an amazing job. I didn't even know that was him. I didn't even know that was like a black man. Well, biracial. I think he's biracial, right? Him and his sister. Yeah. But uh, Sidney Poitier, he's another one of my favorites. But um, if you don't know these guys who I'm talking about, this is history. You've got to watch some Charles Bronson, some Lee Van Clee, some Quentin Tarantino, Clint Eastwood. I mean, I can go on and on. It's just these people, they, they are some uh, phenomenal actors. And they've all got awards and Grammys and I can go on and on. Yeah, it's amazing, amazing people. Okay, I wish my friend was here because he he knows his westerns, man. <laughs> I don't know much. I'm trying to remember. I couldn't even think of another one if you asked me. Cause like Charles Bronson, he was in a lot of movies, but I can't remember the names. And what I also like about westerns is they're so intriguing, like. Every move is going to be something else, you know? You just so, you can't wait for the next part. <laughs> and I love how it's always like the um, Mexicans or the Indians. You know, you have the whites and then the blacks. The blacks aren't always slaves. You know, a lot of the Westerns, the blacks, they work in the bars or the... Uh, the whorehouses, you know, some of them actually own stores or land, you know, it's not always slave, they're not always slaves, yeah. But I love how um, Quentin Tarantino did uh, the Django Untitled. If you haven't watched um, the Django, why don't you just start off, if you haven't watched the Django Untitled with uh, Jamie Foxx, why don't you just go ahead and watch the... Um, the um the regular the original Django, that was good too. I forget that guy's name. What was his name? Oh no, I can't remember. At the tip of my tongue, I can't, just you know I'm not going to try to think of it. I I thought of enough already, and I'm shocked I got that out. But when you have people that you love, you kind of remember. So um you know Django was a movie and then they did Django Untitled and they took some ideals from that movie. So it's it's um but uh it's nothing like the new Django Untitled with Jamie Foxx and Christopher Waltz. That movie is it's just amazing. I just love how they terrorized and he made him he was a slave one day and then he turned into like <laughs> this villain that could just kind of run the world. It was amazing. I hate that uh Christopher Waltz had to die at the end. That was really sad. I didn't expect that to happen. I did not expect that to happen. Okay, I guess we'll put on another bunny. You know, I think we better start on the other side. So that's how it's coming out. It's looking amazing. And then let's start the other side. So we got one and then two. So um, I don't think you have to do it evenly. You can probably just put the charms where you want. I just love symmetrical things. Don't ask me why. Because I'm sure you can just put it on any way and it will look stunning. Maybe I'll put this piece on. No, I want to save that for next. Oh, I'm going to use the boxing glove. Okay, one, two. And if I'm not mistaken, you can Google all uh, westerns, all spaghetti westerns, on um on YouTube. Yeah, you don't have to like pay. Maybe you know they do charge you to watch the Django Untitled, but you can find it on YouTube for free because people um they have um how do you call it? I'm trying to think of the name. Um, um what is that called? What is that called when you donate money? Um, I can't think of the name, but um, the other night I watched it, I almost paid. 
and I was just about to click uh, my credit card. Uh, it was only a couple dollars. On, I think it was HBO or Netflix, one of those. And um, and then I got tired. I said, I'm not going to want to watch that whole thing. And I don't know how long they're going to give me. Most time when you pay for a movie on YouTube, uh, they let you watch it for 24 hours. But I did, just didn't know. So I didn't want to take the risk. So I came out and I said, I'll um, pay for it in the morning. So I have enough time to watch it because it is a long movie or series. And um, so the next day I found it for free. I couldn't believe it. It just popped up in my DM. I was really, really shocked. So if you want to watch some um, old school um, spaghetti westerns, just uh, I guess you would go to Google and maybe type in Quentin Tarantino or um, Lee Van Clee. Start with Lee Van Clee. You would love his work. Tall, sexy, dark, handsome. You name it, he's it. <laughs> he played in another movie. I'm trying to think of it with those birds. I can't think of that name. What's the name of that? Okay. I can't think of anything else. This is so cute. It's coming out real cute. I need, I put this on the wrong side. Yeah, because you want it to hang, you know, left or right. And I put it on the right side of the hoop. So I had to take this one off real quick. Just takes a second. Just slide it out. And then put it on the opposite side. Yeah, okay. Okay, one and two. What are we going to choose next? Um, maybe this horse. Let me hold that there. I got to get a ring for this horse. So cute. And this helps. See, I'm holding, see, I'm holding the ring. And this way it can slide right on. Here, and when you try to do it with your fingers, a bit tedious because you know our fingers aren't that skinny. Well, narrow rather. See that so narrow, the tip of that. So it helps to bond everything together. This one's really off track, so I had a lot of errands to run today, and I had to rely on a friend because of my window situation. I don't want to drive it like that, even though he wrapped it so nice for me where I could where I could drive it. Yeah, we got some, uh, what is that? That Gorilla Tape, because it's weatherized since it's raining so much, so it could hold up. And if you got, if you have any issues with your windows on your car, remember when you buy tape, be careful not to put the tape on your enamel on your paint, because it can peel off, especially that Gorilla uh, Tape. So we t taped it on the stainless steel part. You know, like all cars have like that stainless steel rim um, on the window, underneath the window, so we taped it to there, yeah. And then secured it on the inside. Okay, so far this is looking really cute. One, two. Let's see if my granddaughter wants this. If not, I'll sell it. And we'll put the little poodle. I need another ring. I don't see one. Oh, I wanted to put this one. I forgot. That one might go there. No, no, okay. See one, two.
This ring is really out of whack. It's barely a circle, but I don't have many more, so I want to try to make it work. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do, I had that beautiful shell necklace. I think we made this the last time. I can't remember. Let me move it. Oh, I got it the wrong way. So I have, I try to have like them facing the front. Let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Pull this here. Oh no, that's too close. Okay. I'm going to show it to you at the end, but I want to use this to hold it for me. It's a great idea. And so I guess I could just kind of put it towards that. So let me make sure it's in the shot. Oh no, I got to go further away. Okay, so maybe I'll work on this side. Yeah. Um, do they wear charm necklaces anymore? I see tons of charm bracelets, but I don't see charm necklaces too tough. Yeah. Okay, what we'll put next? We'll put another person. So I finally made it to the dentist today. And um, uh, they said they have to um, I have to come back because this was my first time to this new office. I wasn't happy about that at all. So um, I already made complaints to my insurance company. Oh, maybe this one doesn't open. Don't, sometimes if it doesn't open, you it's sorted together. Oh, there it goes. Okay. But sometimes if you have a, a loop and it doesn't open, you can just cut it. And it'll open right up. So don't let that stop you. This one is so small. I'm trying to do it. Like, I can barely grab it because it's so little. And then that's with my left hand. Okay, I think I got it. Oh, <laughs> see how it pops out? I actually should be doing it this way. Holding it with this. When it comes to a situation like this where the loop is smaller. so you Because this will give you a better grip. And then you just twirl with that. Okay. And uh, what's what's up next? I do like this um little poodle here. One, two. Oh, that one went on so easy. That's what I like. Let's add a bunny. So at some point, if I find that bag of charms, we'll do another one and with a bracelet to match. It wasn't enough here to do a bracelet and a necklace, so that's why I didn't. So I guess we won't be using these. They're too big for charms, but we might use them as a pendant. But then I was looking at this horse. That would be kind of cute for the pendant, especially since we have horses. But this is kind of like a really cheaply made. Like the other ones are either stainless steel, pewter, or sterling. This one is like out of a bubblegum machine. She has that blue. 
This must have came on like a little child's necklace or something like that. But I guess it'll look cute. We'll just use that side. I don't know. Maybe we'll use that horse's head. We'll see. Now, what other charms do I have that will look cute here? I think that one's too glittery. Is that the Florida Lee? I think that is a Florida Lee. I just noticed that. Here's a lion, but he doesn't have a, um, a thing where you can put a hoop. There's a hole, but like a stick would go in that hole. Let me see something. Let me just try. Sometimes you gotta make things. Okay, so maybe that would that work? That might work. Let me see. Let's give it a try. I love to make these. I This is how I kind of started getting into making jewelry with um, doing charm bracelets and necklaces or just like fixing jewelry. Yeah. So when I used to get those grab bags, a lot of the jewelry was broken and I would just try to fix it. Okay, got the lion on. Um, what next? Maybe this one. Some horses. Did we put any horses on here yet? Oh, my. oh yeah, we got one horse on on this side. So see, if we would have did every three, we would have been finished already. And we have a lot of charms. So I think I like to wear charm. Um, you know, they also have like pieces. Um, how can I describe it? Um, it's kind of like a any type of shape, like a round shape or a heart shape. Excuse me. And you can open it and put your charms on it and with your charms hanging on the bottom. That's also called a charm um, necklace. But this is a charm necklace too. In fact, I have one of those. You know, it's like a charm holder. That's what it's called, a charm holder. So it would be your pendant. And then you would put all your charms on there. But I never liked that because all the charms kind of just hang down together in one spot. You can't even see them. I don't understand the purpose of that at all. I'm really lost with that. I wasn't sure why they made those. But um, people used to love to wear them. I used to wear mine when I was younger. But I used to only wear one charm on it. I didn't like to wear a lot of charms on it because you couldn't even see them. They were all bunched up together. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Those charm catchers. Like catches all the charms. That's why they would call it like a charm catcher. One, two. Okay, it's this one. And this is the little peanut man we're putting on. <laughs> Okay, one more on that side, and then we're going to put whatever's going to hang down the middle. Let me find a good one. Um, do I want to put the cheerleaders? I don't, I don't like the pom-poms too much. I think this one will be cute. And it's sterling too. It says, Mom. Nah, that won't look right. Well, we have this little shoe. That's cute, so maybe we'll go with that. Oh, maybe I'll just put this one on. But this might be too long. So he's kind of tall. I should have put him further up. Let me see. Okay, I'll put him on. Because then we have that peanut man and it'll balance it out. So the peanut man is on this side. See him right there? The plantains guy. Okay, and I think we're going to go with the horse for the pendant, since we have horses on it. I think that'll look cute. But I don't know, this owl is so gorgeous. 
Okay, let's try to see which one looks nicer. I actually think the owl one looks nicer. I don't know. I guess it depends on your liking. Oh, no. I'm confused. <laughs> oh, no. Um. Okay, I'm going to show them both to you. And then I'll just start. I'll pick one. And if you don't like it, just tell me and I'll change it. Okay, let me take a look and step back a bit. And it's got to be that owl because the owl is just so cute. He's got little rhinestones. You should see his little feet. He's so cute. This is not sterling. And I don't even think it's pewter. Yeah. I thought this opened up. Does it? Or maybe it does. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, he's right up. I will just clamp him right on. Oh, came all the way off. I should have known. And I got to be careful because I don't want it to break. Oh, no. Which way was it on there? I guess it was on there that way. Okay. And it's this one. I gotta make sure it's closed. It's not closed enough. Okay. All right, so let me show it to you real good. What time are we up to? We up to, okay, we have a little bit more time. We'll do something else. I think it came out beautiful. I love it. I'm gonna actually wear it. So every time I say I'm gonna wear it, next time I go out, I actually do. I wore one today when I went out. Um, I love it. It's so vintage. Like the chain is vintage. All the charms are vintage. And then that's the back. You can even hang a little, uh, another charm on the back to let it hang like down. Wish I can get a better shot it's so far away. Mm, okay, we'll just leave it there. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed that. I really enjoyed talking about those spaghetti westerns. Um, whoever watches, please let me know what you watch. And um, we still have this cow light necklace to make. It's still sitting here. Let me just show you. See it right there? Um, this will be the pendant. And then we have some more skulls. So that will be included in the necklace too. Um, this will be a cute little necklace. And then I also have these pendants. You know, but I chose this one because I think that'll be cute, and we'll incorporate some um some. There's a few. These are turquoise. I have a few pieces of turquoise. Some is howlite, and I don't think those are our corals. We went through that before. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's coral. Okay, let's clean up this mess, and so we have more to do a bracelet. I guess this might have been enough to make a bracelet, but. I don't feel like digging that because I have another chain like this that I it's a um it's a it's a set. The the uh the bracelet to that that necklace that we just made. Yeah. And we'll do that another time. And then I also found these when I was looking for these. I found a whole lot of gold tone charms. So or maybe we'll find uh, you know I have some uh, necklaces like this too in gold tone. I just need to find them. So we'll do that another time. I guess we could have done that now. I should have pulled it out. Duh. But I found it. Like, this is a cute little tennis racket. It's so cute. <laughs> have a blowfish. A beautiful horse. A wishbone. A little shoe. Another horse. A little heart. I mean it goes on and on. Some religious pieces. Yeah. You're going to have to come back to do another charm. And it's, it was quite easy. Like this wasn't difficult at all. I mean, even if you have disability with your hand and you have some motion, you could most likely tackle something like this. It wasn't that hard at all. All you have to do, if you can still squeeze, you can still um, clamp the two together and clip it on. That was, that was an easy project. 
So now what can we do now? What do I have? Oh, oh I have these. Yeah, I wanted to show you this. And I also have stuff from my last haul. That um the things that I bought, I remember my car window uh got damaged, so I didn't do a haul. I do apologize. So um the stuff is on the dining table. I need to show you what I maybe we'll do it when I'm done with this, but I still haven't showed you this. I bought this from uh that nice goodwill that I went to that had all those vintage pieces. And this was a cross, it was just beautiful. So it's full of these little uh brass whatnots. Can you see that? It's just gorgeous. It's like a man, a heart bottle of whiskey or a cat another man bending down like a goddess lady another goddess lady a rifle a man praying another bottle of whiskey an eagle another heart different shape a naked lady a, a little baby a, a, a ostrich i mean it goes on and on a, a dog a lady with a skirt a baby a, a lock and key a fish some boobs a rooster this is beautiful. A cocktail drink, some lips. Just amazing. And some of the things are repeated, like it's a rifle, there's another man praying. Uh, maybe, does anyone know where these came from? Please let me know. Was it the Cracker Jacks? I don't know, but somebody was selling these and someone collected them and added them all on. That was so smart. And I don't know, if they. I guess they came with holes in them because they all have little tiny like tacks. You know, so I guess they came with holes on them. Oh, maybe they were charms? I don't know. But you just have so many. as a horse. And like I said, a lot of them are doubled or even tripled. It's just beautiful. I love folk art like this. I love it. I'm not too crazy about the blue paint, so I will be painting that. Maybe I'll do a tutorial. I'm thinking more like a brown color or like this brass, the brass color to, you know, to just make it look beautiful. Yeah, because that, whoever painted it blue, it's not working for me. But nevertheless, the piece is beautiful. Whoever made this did a phenomenal job. They just grouped them all in. And they probably kept buying and adding. Here's a beautiful pig, a leg, just one leg. There's <laughs> a beautiful dog, a pinchman dog. Oh, just beautiful. There's no signature. If I made a piece like this, you better believe it. My signature is going to be carved somewhere. <laughs> I mean, come on. How could you make something so beautiful and not sign it? Uh, I was shocked that this was on the shelf. If this was in Atlanta, I would have never got my hands on it. <laughs> those scavengers and those um collectors that come out early, as soon as the store opened, they would have grabbed. This is folk art, so they would have grabbed that up. Ain't no telling how old this piece is. It's on a piece of solid wood. It just put two pieces together, made a cross. And then you can tell somebody modernized it. They put this piece on it and they painted it blue. That's not original to the piece, you can tell. And then I also had this other cross that I bought earlier in the month. It was just beautiful. Oh, I love it. And this is amber glass. It's just gorgeous. Well, not amber glass. Amber colored glass. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And I believe this is um, just some type of metal that's, that is framed in. Um, it's a cross. So they made a cross out of like pear shapes. It's beautiful. I love it. I can't wait till it turns warm. I could hang it in my window. But I may... I may sell this piece. I'm not sure. You know, because I'm collecting. As I'm shopping, I do so. I'm collecting little whatnots to start my store. When I reach, I got to get to 500 subscribers. Oh, yeah. Also, if you're new to my channel, you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> please subscribe. Because I I'm, I'm really want to get to 500 so I can start selling things. Because I don't... I don't know when I would be monetized. It's like a lot. You have to have 3,000 subscribers. <laughs> and, um... And 4,000 watch hours, that's a bit much. For my channel is so slow. <laughs> but I'm so grateful of my subscribers. It's so slow, but it's just amazing. The subscribers are amazing. I love you guys. Okay, what else can we do over here? Maybe we can finish up some uh, footage in this book. Just a little bit, and then we'll uh, close up the video. If you're exhausted, you can go ahead and um, stop watching now. Or maybe let the video run, or... Would you like, but um, if you're interested in this book that I showed before, let me show you again for whoever's new. It's 
called The Pleasures of Jewelry and Gemstones. And the light is like right on it. <laughs> that's not my ring light. That's my magnifying light. It's beautiful. It's a vintage book. And so I left the card. See where we left off. So I wouldn't be confused. Yeah. And I confuse one subscriber for another. I'm so sorry. I hate when I do that. So what I'm going to do is like when you, some people, when they subscribe to my channel, it comes in my email, but sometimes it doesn't. And that's like every 10 person that may come in my email. I'm not sure why, why some comes in the email telling me that you subscribe with your name and, um, well, your, you know, your YouTube name that you use. And then some, I don't even know who subscribed to my channel or not. So I tend to mix things up, and I'm so sorry. But what I need to do, at least the ones that's coming into YouTube, I need to write them down. And also the people who comment certain things that we talk about, I need to start writing it down because I don't want to mix nothing up. You know, that's that's rude, you know. So I do apologize if I've ever mixed up your name or something we talked about. I do apologize. You know, I'm only human. But let's move some of these things out the way. And get into this beautiful book. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is looks like a pendant, and I guess that's a brooch. That is beautiful. Let's see what it says. The far right. It's a steel gold and silver drama scene locket. Oh. Wait, is that this one? This is a drama scene? Mm. It says far right. It's called Damascene. Um, it's a technique of encrusting steel or iron with more precious metal, in this case, gold and silver. Oh, that's this. This is gorgeous. Kind of has an Asian look. The design is oriental. No wonder. No wonder it's oriental. You know, before they didn't say Asian, they said oriental. First, when I was little, they used to call them Chinese. And my mother used to say, don't say she's Chinese because they're not all Chinese. They come from all parts of the country and the world. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But my mom was... She hated when we did things like that. So, and especially my aunt, she was an English teacher and other teachers. So she always like got on us with words and things you're supposed to say the proper way. But, um, and then it changed to Oriental. So then you had to say Oriental. And, um, and my mom used to say, if you don't know if a person's Chinese, Vietnamese, you know, uh, from Tokyo, Japan, just say Oriental. It's you, this way you won't, you know, disrespect anybody. And it's appropriate to say. And then it changed to Asian. So now we say Asian. Yes. Um, okay. The design is Oriental in flavor, but this piece is probably late 19th century English. And it's uh, ivory leaves were a favorite Victorian motif. Oh, that's what that is? Oh, yeah, the, the leaves. Okay, this oh, this is ivory leaves. Yes, I love ivory leaves. And this one is an ivory leaf. This one is some type of um, just weeds. And look at these beautiful uh, pearl drop earrings. These are gorgeous. Kind of look Art Deco. Let's see what they say. Intricate sea pearl parus. Link with horse hair. Wow. To a mother of pearl frame was plentiful during the 18th and early 19th century. Wow. A pair of long seed pearl earrings, circa 1860. And what is this stuff on this side of the page? Left. A uh, popular Victorian jewelry. Are you in this? Okay, here it is. Let me show it to you. I wonder if it would be just easy if I just held the phone. Hmm. Mm -mm. Right, it just seemed like that would be easier. But this is all Victorian, like cameos. Can you see that? It's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love it. You know, I love cameos. Look at that one. Look at the one on the bottom. And this is nice, too. And so that's Victorian jewelry. So they tell you this is a locket, a gold. Oh, that this one's a this one's a gold locket. This one right here. That's a gold locket. And you have a garnet bracelet on top. Wow. Uh, oval and gold locket. I guess they're talking about that one. It just goes on and on. I don't feel like saying each one, but those are gorgeous. Wow, look at this beautiful necklace. 
Um, this was uh, from Europe. Uh, it's from the Renaissance period. It's beautiful. It's in Tudor style. That's definitely Tudor style. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. You have all these gemstones in it. Rubies, emeralds. I don't even have to read the the it, it, it tells the story. You can just look at it. Rubies, emeralds, and pearls. It's amazing. And let's see what it says. Uh, rubies and emeralds. Yep. It's beautiful. That is gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Mm. You can still purchase things like this. You got to get up very early and go to those estate sales, and you have to have a lot of cash. A lot of cash. And this one's okay. It's not really my style. This is uh, rubies and peridots. Mm. That's beautiful. Not really my style, but it is beautiful. Look how it's made. Oh my goodness. Oh. You have the pendant in the middle, the two side drops, and then two more. It's just lovely. And peridot is that green stone. And then you have your rubies. It's exquisite. That is exquisite. And then here we have a big giant. Kind of looks like the crosses we were just holding. Well, you know. Um, this is from Queen Victoria. Uh, there's a brooch on top. That is beautiful. And look at her. She's all ensemble. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Wow. These women back in this period, they were blessed, man. If they only knew, because they only did was plain and and, and, and give orders. <laughs> man, if they only knew. They had it, they were able to wear so much royalty, beautiful quality clothes, earrings, jewelry. And then they had people at their beck and calls. Mm, just amazing. Uh, this is Art Nouveau and Art Deco. Oh, this is gorgeous. What is it? Um, it's a uh, pendant. It's exotic plants. Wow. It's just beautiful. Gorgeous. Okay. Let me finish this book. Okay, that'll be good. Wow, look at that. That's a necklace. It's not in the shot. There it is. It's beautiful. It looks like um opal. Let's see what it says. Um on left. The brooches of gold set with emeralds. Suspended below is a Baroque pearl. This is emeralds? Oh, oh, the white ones. Okay. They don't tell you what that stone is in the middle. Oh, I guess that's the emerald. It maybe it's a different color emerald, but I thought they were mother of pearls, but that is gorgeous. That is so artsy. It has like a real art art uh, deco feel to it. And these are some beautiful pro brooches with such beautiful. This is like lapis. And that's a pink sapphire. Just beautiful. What is this over here? You see, it's like a black necklace. I'm not sure. What is that? Um, oh, right. It was onyx. Onyx gold and pearl. It was Art Deco design. Oh, just gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. It gets even better. Look at this set. Oh, my gosh. That is beautiful. Oh, this looks like cuffings, but it's a brooch with earrings. That is gorgeous. It's got emeralds and rubies, and they're all cut and faceted. You got diamonds in there. Oh, my gosh. Like, all of this that you're seeing is diamonds on top of gold. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, it's Cartier. Oh, my God. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Wait, is that one this one? Wait, let's, let me make... I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Let me see. Okay, so above is a brooch of three columns. Okay, that's a brooch up there. Oh, Cartier. Is this the Cartier piece? Oriental curl. Above right. Okay, so that's the above right. Yes, this is Cartier. Gorgeous. You know, Cartier is that. I don't think I own a Cartier piece, but you can't never say never because you never know what you have. You never know what you have. You know, Cartier, they didn't mark all their pieces, so you may have one. Like if you have like some really um exquisite um hair clips, vintage ones. Let's see, they have like the same type of setting with these diamonds and these emeralds and these rubies. Rubies, Cartier, they specialized in this. I mean, this is what they did. And back then, they were pricey and they still are. Yes. This Cartier jewelry was never so cheap. Never. It's just so talented. It's the, I mean, look, can you see that pendant? 
thing is gorgeous. Simply beautiful. Oh my gosh. Ooh. I don't know what this is. What is that? Those rings? Or they sh is that the... Because I think it's rings on poles. Hmm. Okay, so it's a collection of jewelry by Wendy Ramshaw. I heard of her. Yeah, she does like abstract things. And yes, that's what that is. So it's four rings. Okay, I thought so. The pole, cause I didn't know if the poles were attached to the jewelry or not, but you can see, clearly see the rings. So you have this ring, that one, that one, and that one. They are gorgeous. Looks like pieces of art, isn't it? See that? Looks like art, like you're hanging it on the wall. Wow. And these are agates. Chow Sedani. Chow Sedani is a blue stone, so most likely that's just blue stone right here. That's a gemstone, Chow Sedani. Um, what else does it say? So this, the designer supplies the perplex stands with her rings in order that they may be displayed like sculptures when not being worn. It makes sense. So when you buy the ring, you buy the, the this too, so you could leave it in your house as a sculpture. That's phenomenal. And that can give you an idea too. If you have rings similar, you could um, display them on columns like this. That gives me an idea. These are cute. These look like um, Art Deco earrings. Okay, we're going to wrap this up soon. This is a beautiful brooch. It's from India. It's gorgeous. That is beautiful. What is it? Oh, it's some, is that a lizard or a bird? Oh, no. Um, I, mean, I got to read because I can't tell. Hmm, I don't see where it says left or right. They're just talking about jade and... Um, the Muslim 16th century, China, India, any other way. Um, I want to say, is that a dragon? Maybe because you see the smoke coming out. I can't. I can't really make out what it is. It's some type of lizard or dragon. Um, I don't see any wings, so it's not a bird. But that is a beautiful brooch. I think they're going to tell us about it on the following page. And this is some gold jewelry. That's beautiful right there. I'm assuming those are earrings, and that's the necklace. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's see, previous page. So that was a... Oops! Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry, but that happened. Huh. Okay. So the previous page was the detail of hairpins from the Qing Dynasty. Oh, my Lord. Where were the hairpins? Were that those two? The hairpins of a, is of silver. Oh, that's this what they talk. I'm confused now because I don't see any hair, silver hairpins on this page. Oh, I'm confused what they talking about. But this is gorgeous. That bracelet. Can you see it with the animal heads? That is gorgeous. And this is Chinese jewelry. It's uh had the function of an Dictate, dic, dictating the wearer rank of status. The bracelet appears to have been made for purely decorative pur purposes. It is of gold and is from the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644, decorated with dragon head, terminals, and filigree, and inlaid with stones, possible agate. The heads and the design in the filigree are all of symbolic, symbol, symbolic importance. The craftsmanship is superb. The bracelet is hinged in the center back while the dragon head slot together with a connecting tongue. Wow. This is from the Qing Dynasty. That is amazing. Oh, that's beautiful. Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. Woo. <laughs> okay, let's do this page here. This looks really interesting. Oh my gosh. Can you see all that jade? That is gorgeous. And this is 19th century Chinese jewelry made from the export market. Oh, my goodness. Mm, that's beautiful. They called it China Seri. No, I'm not saying it right. Uh, China Sore. Wait, how do you pronounce it? China Sore. I think it's China Sore. In England, the carved stone brooch top depicts five old men at a cer ceremony, and the dragon is in 22 carat. Uh, that's the dragon right there. Mm. I'm loving this one. It's a brooch. It looks like a vase with flowers. Do you see that? That is beautiful. 
The enamel brooch left is European China sore, designed in the peacock blue. That's this one. It's gorgeous. This matches it too. Wow. This is gorgeous. Carved locker. Carved lacquer was imported to Europe from the 17th century and incorporated in furniture by English cabinet makers. You know, one thing, when you're into jewelry, you learn so much about history, like with wars and like when the soldiers came home from the wars, certain jewelry that the soldiers made, certain jewelry that the families made and sent them, uh, history from one country to the next, how they ship uh, stones or ship metal. It's just amazing. It's so much history. It's not just jewelry. What is this over here? A headband set. No, that's that's this one. That's this. This is the headband. What is that one? Left, right. Oh, that's turquoise. A turquoise pearl and ruby pendant framed with diamonds. Oh my goodness. Oh, you see that one up here? That is beautiful. It kind of looks Egyptian, doesn't it? It's beautiful. It's an enamel bird pendant. Oh, that's below. So what is this? It, the design of flowers and a bird is characteristic. Oh, they just tell me that. Oh, wow. You know, I have something like this, that little Inca man. Remember I showed that? Little brass piece. I tested it. It's not gold. It's brass. That looks just like it. Um, and this is a Shante ankle, anklet. That's that right there. It's beautiful. Pure gold. Just amazing. This is a gold mask pendant from Peru. Oh, that's right. Remember that piece that I, it said Peru. Yeah, sure enough. This from this symbol here is from Peru. It's a, a gold mask pendant from Peru. The exact purchase of this pendant mask is open to speculation. Several gold funeral masks have been discovered by their symbolic significance is unknown. The significance of the knife left. Oh, what knife? Oh, this. Oh, this is they calling this a knife. I didn't know that. Wow. It's a ceremonial knife surrounded, uh, surmounted by a hollow, dumpy figure who must represent a ruler or a deity. Wow, it's deep, deep, deep. It goes on and on, but I can't really talk about things like that on YouTube, so we got to walk away. But wow. And this one has all, do you see that turquoise inlay in there? Let me see if I can get it. This is turquoise in here, and it's gold. It's gorgeous. So that was a knife. Wow. Mm. And then this section is gemstones and metals. Look at that piece of gold. It's beautiful. And then they're showing... What is this? Left is some emeralds. Yeah, this is emerald. Oh, it's beautiful. Do you see that? The rough emerald rough. It has like crystal around it. It's just gorgeous. And then you have some emerald pieces here. And um, wow, so this is what diamond rough looks like. It's amazing. I've never seen nothing like that before. You see that? So they're showing you where the diamond come from. Isn't that gorgeous? That's a piece of rough. Oh my gosh. It's a diamond crystal in Kimberly in a brilliant cut diamond. I bet. <laughs> That's one of the best. The brilliant cut. The vast majority of diamonds occur in a basic ignition. Ignish rock called Kimberlite. Wow. It is in the rock that diamonds occur in Africa and Russia, and it is assumed that all other deposits of diamond had their origin in such rocks. Mm -mm -mm. They were being trans transported by the rivers. Wow. This is, I would love to have that specimen in my collection. That is gorgeous. And I have a lot of these type of gemstones, if anyone's interested. And I couldn't tell you much about them because I don't know what they are. I've collected them from time to time. I don't know if they're sapphires, glass, rubies, um, emeralds. Um, I just don't know. And I tried to test them. You just it's, it's really difficult. You need an expert. And I'm sure a lot of people who collect jewelry have a lot of these. Like I, Let me see if I have any right here. I think I have some right here. Let me show them to you. I don't know what they are. But if anyone's interested, we can go through them like this. I don't know if that's a ruby or a piece of glass, some more. And then I have tons of this stuff. 
There's even some little ones in here. I don't know why this is in here. I'm not sure. What is that? That's a piece of turquoise, like for your pendant. But can you see? I have so many. I don't know what this stuff is. Look at this big, beautiful glass. So it's pointing on one end. So it looks like it was in something. I mean, that could be emerald. I don't know. How do you... Like, it's so hard to test. And I've tried with my tester. It just... It's kind of off. Yeah, I don't know what, what any of these things are. See that one? Beautiful. Uh, is it ruby? I don't know. I don't have a clue. I got so many of them. Different kinds, different colors. That's, a, that, that's um, cat's eye. I can tell that. But like these little things, I don't know what they are. I guess most of them are glass. I'm sure of that. But like some may just be, you know, something that you don't know. Maybe you can sell it. Or somebody might want to buy it. Like, I couldn't even sell these because I don't know what I would sell them as. I don't think I could part with these, though. Yeah, until I have, like, an expert look at it. Because I don't know if I have um any rubies or, or emeralds or diamonds in here. So I'd have to get, get this tested before I would think about selling it. What's that? Well, that's one of those stars. The little green star. And I have tons, I have tons of these things. This is just a small little jar. I have stacks like this. This could actually be a blue sapphire. It's gorgeous. You see that? Just beautiful. And if you have things like this, store it with similar so they don't scratch one another. Yeah. Okay, well, we can go on and on. What's this? Oh no, got away from me. Oh, I lost it. <laughs> Right, this is how beautiful that is. I don't know what it is. The bottom is pointy. Uh, it's my phone. Well, I guess I'll answer it. I guess we'll go ahead and end the video. Let's see what else is in the book. Some more of those gemstones. And then they have these beautiful cat eyes right here. Gorgeous. And see, I'm familiar with cat eyes. So I don't have to Google it. I know what they are. Sorry about the phone ringing. I don't feel like reaching over. It'll stop after a while. Um, this looks like some more jade with some agates and a few other little things. Just be beautiful collections. You know, we love stuff like this. Amazing book. What is this to the left here? Let's see what this is. This is a gorgeous. I think it looks like turquoise to me, but I'm not sure. Uh, that says above. So above you have crystals and garnets. See? That's what I'm saying. You can have crystals or garnets. So you don't know what you have. Mm, what is this? Below? Mm, I'm not sure what this is. I can't tell. I'm missing it. It's in here somewhere, but I'm missing it. But I believe it's a piece of turquoise. I'd rather be sure. Excuse me, I don't see it. Because this page is talking about a lot of other things other than what's on the page. Okay, we're all done. Okay. This is beautiful. This is what was on that page. In fact, I wanted to see what that was. I forgot. Isn't it gorgeous? I wanted to see what that was. Let's go back and see what they said that was. Here it goes right here because we missed that. I was so busy with the diamonds, remember? The brilliant cut diamonds. <laughs> brilliant cut diamonds. <laughs> Man, I don't I don't think I have any of those, but those are gorgeous. I had I had I had a couple and some brooches, but I sold them because it was worth selling. So what is this? Because this is what's on that front and back page. So it's something special. It's some type of specimen. Mm, two emerald cuts. So it says left. But what about this one? Oh, this they're talking about the center. Okay, then front four faceted emeralds. Yes, that's the four emeralds right here. And uh they're saying how these are flawless. Um, they are um, specified beauty. They sparkle. They're talking about these emeralds. Well, what about this? Let me just skip this piece. Hmm. Left, a diamond crystal. That's this. What is this? Maybe it tells us on this page. Oh, it says it right here. Sorry, following page. This is an old book, so they did things like that. They said following page, previous page. Now they really don't do that too much. It's a fibrous mass of native silver. Wow, I would have never thought that. 
Many of the properties of gold are shared by silver and it is often found in association with gold. Mm -mm -mm. It is seldom found in its pure state, but is naturally natural alloy with other metals. The natural alloy of gold and silver is known as electron. It was liked and used by the Greeks who thought it was a separate metal. So this is a fibrous mass of silver. Just amazing. You have anything look like that? That's silver. Get a good look. It's beautiful. In fact, let me turn it around. That's gorgeous. And look at the emerald. This book was really interesting. I've never seen uh, a, a rough of brilliant cut diamonds. This was amazing. I, You know, I actually never read this book. I've had it all these years. I've never read it. Um, if you're interested, I don't know if they sell them. It's um, The Pleasure of Jewelry and Gemstone. So hard to get it in the shot. Let me pull the camera up. Because I know some people may be interested. Because it's a really beautiful book. The Pleasure of Jewelry and Gemstones by Joseph Sadiloff. And Allison Richards. And if anyone's interested and didn't get that, just send me a comment, and I'll I can just comment you back. Is that in? That's it's that simple. And of course, the front is just beautiful. Do we look at the inside? See how that thing's on the front cover? That's why I wanted to see what it was because they just beautiful. That's that five voice of silver. I knew it was something important because it's on the front and the back book. Oh yeah, we saw this already. That Art Deco lady. Okay, guys, I love you all. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. And I'll see you next time. <laughs> I ended the vid, So I know I ended the video, but I wanted to add this in. And I need to get this moved. I need to set up this table for another video. So I just had to add it in. I'm so sorry, guys. So remember I bought this in that last haul when I, when I had, had the issue with my car. So I couldn't show it. So it's a vintage... Or antique uh, dresser or drawer rather yes an antique drawer and I think they would abuse these like in a post office or a place where they sold medicine or inks I'm not sure whatever they were selling buttons it could have came from a sewing business or a tailor business but you saw me pick it up in the hall which right with that saran rack and I know you was like why is she buying that remember it had the corks inside let me get the corks in right here and I just wanted to show you what you could do with it. You can just put your uh, gemstones on, like you making jewelry, put some here. And it's just gorgeous for that. I always, I never see them. I was so shocked that I saw this one. And I almost left it because I wasn't, someone turned it into like a portrait. They had it hung up, so they put like a hanging thing on the back. And then they had these in it. So that was just their design. So I wasn't sure if it was antique. And then because of the length, I never saw it with the length. But there was this old man behind me online. He was like, why are you putting that down? It's so cute. I said, I can't tell if it's antique because it was all wrapped up. I said, why does it have legs? Because I've had some of these in the past. They never have legs. And he was like, that's the slots from the drawers. You see it right there? Yeah, you can see it. So, he, so thank God for him. I put it back in my cart because I actually took it out of my cart. Yeah, so I'm so glad. See, it always has these antique handles on it. This one says Hamilton MFG Company. So I guess we can Google that. Wasn't that like a tailor business where they sold like sewing materials? I think I'm not 100% sure. Or like men's clothing. Wow. So this is what you can do. So if you see pieces like this, pick them up. They're great for your gemstones. I just threw some stuff in here just to kind of give you an idea. I got some coral going on. Some clay beads, some agates, you know, it's just perfect for, if you want to start your gem cone, your gemstone collection, this is what you need. You can put one here, you can put your label, put another stone there, put your label, it's perfect, perfect, perfect. And then it has these larger spaces for groupings. And this is also what I got in that haul. This beautiful, <laughs> this is so gorgeous, cast iron, what are these called, hot plates? No, it's another name, I can't think of it, it's an owl. And it's a little rusty. I'm just going to put some oil on that. That rust will go away so easily. Um, I will be selling this. That's why I'm trying to pick up little things like that now when I start selling things. So that'll be one thing I'll sell. And I got this cute little um, cup for Valentine's. Because I'm not going to do a Valentine's um, video. So I don't have a loved one. So <laughs> I have loved ones, but not like a, you know, a boyfriend or a husband. So I won't be doing that. 
And um, this is vintage from Germany. Great, great cup. I was not too happy. I took the tape off. It kind of peeled. But I'm going to touch that up. And then I'm going to maybe make tea for Valentine's and just give a toast. You know, but, um, you know, I love pieces like this. Will I keep it? I don't think I'm going to keep it. Uh, if somebody wants to buy it as is, maybe I'll sell it. But I just got it for the Valentine's video. And that's it. I won't take up any more of your time. And I kept these two that was in the bag because I could sell these. Lots of people collect them. So I can sell these. No sense in throwing them out. Okay, guys. Enjoy. And God bless. And if you stay to the end, um, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Bye-bye.